Welcome to The Beat from the True Wellness Center. I'm your host, Kelly Kennedy. And The Beats is truly from my heart to yours to help you empower and inspire you to learn how the body actually does work. I am bringing you my friends, my colleagues, the most incredible minds from around the world that I have been able to learn from. And I wanna share them all with you. So that's what The Beats is really about is teaching people what I've been able to learn about how the body works and trying to give that to you in a very simple and practical way to give you things to change your life because you got this. This is all about you and having the ability to heal your own body from within. And that's really my message is from my heart to yours. Welcome to the beats. Welcome to learning how your body works and welcome to opening your heart. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your time and your attention as we focus in on this week's episode of The Beats. Welcome back to The Beats with your host, Kelly Kennedy from the True Wellness Center. And I am very excited to share one of my very good friends, Dr. Lionel King from Florida today, from Naples Vitality um, down in Florida. And I met Dr. King through our coaching group and I fell in love with him and his wife instantly. And I'm very excited to share the medical doctor, Dr. King. And he is so appropriately named Dr. King. I can't (laughs) wait to share. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. King. I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much. This has been a long time coming and 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 I have I am just super excited. Yeah, me too. So, um you were trained more I just want to just jump right into your story because so many of my community is like, "Wow, she's got an actual medical doctor and he lives in the United States. What's going on?" <laughs> um so as you know, Dr. Schaffner, the naturopath who I refer to the most in this country is only limited in certain states. And so it's very challenging for me to find people that are in alignment to understand biological world, the bioregulatory system. And I know Dr. King was at first like, I don't understand what at all you do, Kelly, but we've developed quite a relationship over the last few months. And as I've gotten to know him, one is he's if you're not looking, he's one of the most good looking doctors you're ever going to be around, number one. Number two is he's very intelligent and he's very humble and he's very approachable. And he doesn't have the ego that so many um, that I find in this industry. He's very approachable and and just such wisdom on spirit, not only. He's actually become a mentor to so many of us in the group. I look forward to always picking his brain. But tell us how you got to where you are right now, Dr. King, because you are such a unique human. You wanted to be a doctor your whole life. Like, how did that start? Yeah, very. so I was just, I loved what my pediatrician did. And, and so, well, every, every, every boy wants to be like their dad, you know, if they're fortunate course <laughs> I I wanted to be like my dad my dad was a plumber and so I was like I'm gonna be a plumber until I went to work with him one morning and saw what he actually did I'm like I don't want to be a plumber anymore <laughs> <laughs> and so then I was in my pediatrician's office and every time I would go he had this just beautiful open light colored office and he used to give me an apple out of his refrigerator every and it, I don't know it just it just you know sent a message to me and I was like, you know, I really like what he does because he just made me feel welcome and happy. I want to make other people feel welcome and happy. So since six years old, I wanted to be a pediatrician until I worked with a pediatrician. (laughs) (laughs) And then I remember in college, I did a rotation and all I did was hold kids down while they got their shots. And I'm like, I don't like this. I don't want to do this. That is for sure. I like healthy kids. I don't like to have to give kids shots and, 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 and no. So, but I still wanted to be a doctor. I just didn't know what exactly I wanted to do. So um, I studied hard, went to, went to some of the best institutions in the world. And um, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to do surgery or, or, or uh, medicine, but I didn't like surgeons. I felt like, you know, I, they just were can I say asshole on uh, on your you show? You can say whatever you want, Dr. King. You can say whatever you want. My community <laughs> knows me well enough, but yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't want to become, you know, that personality. 
So I said, let me go into medicine. So I did, I, I uh, did my specialty training in internal medicine at Johns Hopkins University. And so then when I was uh, in my last year of residency, I got a call from my mom and my mom told me that my dad had just been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Mm. And so for those of you don't, that you know, pancreatic cancer, it comes with a four month death sentence. And so uh, it was it was devastating for me. My dad was my best friend. He was my hero, you know, and, and he was healthy. At least I thought he was. And so I flew home and, um, you know, my dad had this horrendous surgery called the Whipple procedure. Uh, and he was in the hospital for a month. Learn, he lost all this weight. He had to learn how to walk again and learn how to eat again. And then after all of this, the doctor says, well, we got the, the, the mass, but I'm, they were sure that there was cancer cells still in his body and recommended chemo. So then my dad was like, you know what? I've suffered enough. I'm not, I don't want to do chemo. Plus it wasn't shown to really work or, or, you know, when we look at the research. So he didn't want to just give up. So I did some research. I found the Optimum Health Institute in San Diego. And I registered both of us to go there. And so we went there and we were only there one week because he, he, he you know, he was too far gone and, and his lungs started filling up with malignant fluid. But in that one week that we were there, I learned more about health. I learned more about nutrition. I learned more about the digestive system. I learned more about the mind-body connection in that one week than the four years in medical school and the three years I had spent at Hopkins. And I remember my father looking up at me after one of the classes and he says, if only I would have known about this sooner. Mm. That was the most helpless moment I feel in my life. Here I had all of this knowledge. Here I'm this doctor. And basic information I didn't know. And I was determined. It was at that point I was determined. I wasn't going to let anyone die or suffer without the knowledge. So that's what planted the seed and really kind of got me you know, on this path. And then once my dad died, you would think that, okay, yep, I, you know, I put on my, my wellness hat and I went out and saved the world. Nope, that is not <laughs> what happened. I buried it because the pain of my dad leaving was so great that I, you know, I put away the juicer, I put away, put away the wheatgrass, I, you know, wow. and I just buried myself and went to work and uh, was very successful in internal medicine and, and, and had a big, big medical office but I wasn't fulfilled because I knew I wasn't pursuing what was on my heart to pursue. I knew I wasn't fulfilling that promise I made to myself and, and my father. And so then, you know, when, once I had enough, um, I went on a spiritual journey. I, I, I did a lot of personal development, sold the practice and then made the leap um, to, to this side, you know, made a leap, and 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 took what was the, the matrix you know took the red pill um and uh and and here i am and it's just been amazing because we the things that we see uh it, we were taught that was impossible we were taught it was impossible in medical school you know autoimmune diseases reversing um you know chronic illnesses cancers reversing all of this stuff we taught we were taught it was impossible but it absolutely is possible. We see it every day. It's, it's amazing. It, it, I had no idea that part of your story. That's, you know, I, my father was ill. That's why I wanted to become a doctor. And on his deathbed, when I finally released that energy, I was like, the, and I was in the car accident right before that. And I realized that medicine didn't have it figured out, but I didn't know how to do it. So it's interesting that we have that connection, but I buried it too after I felt well. Because it's interesting how we do that, though, because it's the knowledge is right there. And I think that's so happening as a, as a microcosm right now, or we're a microcosm of the macrocosm. Like people instinctively know that what we've been told about medicine isn't true. You know, about, I want to take that back, not about medicine, but about how the body really works. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense logically, right? And instinctively, people start to know that. But I give you, so much credit for one week. I mean, only one week of exposure for you to wake up 
right? Because you were always awake, I would say. I mean, if knowing you, Dr. Lionel, you've always been awake. It's just that you needed to go through your own journey like we all do and right. have faith in that journey that it's taken us to the right place. And I don't know about you, but I certainly have felt over the last two years that, and one of the reasons I know we're both in the coaching group is we feel like we're not getting our message out fast enough. Right, absolutely. I mean, obesity, I watched a de demographic the other day, in 1990, only 10% of our population in the United States, and now in 30 years, it's 80%? Yes. Ten, in 30 years, we went from 10% obesity to 80% obesity in 30 darn years. Yes. And yeah. that's, that, you, <laughs> I mean. It's mind boggling. It is mind boggling, but it can be reversed, which is so exciting. And yeah. that to that point, I want to just say, I applaud you on many levels, but I also want people to take a moment to think about I know a lot of you get frustrated with medical doctors. And in my past, I was frustrated with medical doctors, but I'm not frustrated anymore. You know why? Because what I realized is that they are, they go to school to learn medicine because they've been told that's the way. And then you get, we get frustrated when they go to a, we go to a medical doctor and they go, well, I want to give you medicine. Or we go to a surgeon and they go, I want to do surgery, but that's what they were taught. And then you have to look outside for people like Dr. Lionel who are willing to go, well, hey, that's not really working. I don't want to just do that. Let's think of another way. And he's continued his education to go, wow, there's all these other ways that we can actually and then you don't get frustrated because you're at somebody who has studied more than medicine but he also knows medicine so he can take that into account he can look at it from all the different aspects and really understand what's going on for that case but the biggest piece that i like totally align with with dr king is the spiritual piece and the emotional piece and can you tell us a little bit more would you be willing to unpack that journey oh, of your spiritual goodness, piece you. You are opening up Pandora's box. Well, so, that's what I do. <laughs> was interesting when I went on this journey, right? So when I was a medical doctor, I, marketing was a foreign concept to me, okay? Because we didn't have to deal with, with promoting ourselves. And, and I just thought people just showed up. But people actually don't just show up. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. What happens is other companies market for us. The pharmaceutical companies, the, the, the insurance agencies, they go out and do all the marketing and they send the people to us. And then now they own us and dictate how we do things. Okay. So once I, you know, um, got, got out of that model, well, I had a, you know, a, an awakening, a rude awakening. Well, I actually have to market myself. And then I actually have to have these conversations of, wait a minute, I have to tell people, wait, you're going to have to invest in yourself. You're going to have to do most of the work. And you're like, how in the world am I going to convince anyone of that? And the answer is I had to really emotionally connect. I had to emotionally connect. I had to hear them and listen to them. And I already was, you know, I thought I was a good connector. You know, it was just how my mom raised me to, to listen and, and, you know, um, but what I realized is that my training taught me to emotionally disconnect mm. and it and, and, and life taught me to emotionally disconnect. And so that was the hardest thing that I had to do is turn that switch back on because we are applauded when we're strong. We're applauded when, you know, you can make logical decisions and not let emotions get involved. These are the things that, you know, were, were necessary, especially in, in medical school and residency. I remember uh, I had a patient I was very close to. Um, one morning I was rounding in the hospital and was sharing the great news to him and his family that he was going to be able to go home. Literally an hour or two later, I hear the codes go off and it was his room number and he had a heart attack. And so the next minute I'm doing CPR. He passed away and I was very curious of what happened. So uh, four hours later, I was in the pathologist's office holding his heart in my hand while they showed me 
where the vessel uh, was that, that, that was blocked all in one day. And I had to train myself. I mean, that, that should have like, you know, caused some emotional trauma to, to, to a person and it didn't phase me because that, that was my training. So now I had to reverse all of that. Um, and I had to, uh, well, first of all, I had to reverse all that just to embrace what I'm doing. And so that's where the spiritual journey came in. And it, I went to India um, and I was doing these meditations. And, and one of the meditations that they did was where you had to forgive your parents. Right? And I said, well, I had a great childhood. There's nothing that I need to forgive my parents for. But let me, you know, let me just go ahead and, and, and go through the process. So I'm going through the meditation and people are wailing and, and crying. I'm like, oh man, they must have, they must have got abused. Like, what in the world? And so I said, okay, concentrate. I went through it. And so I said, Well, mom, I forgive you for whatever you did that I don't know that you did, but I forgive you. And then I got to my dad, and then something started to come up. And then I just started uncontrollably crying. And the reason is, is because I recognized that I had to forgive my dad leaving it wasn't his fault it wasn't logical right but i had to forgive my dad for leaving and then i had to forgive myself for bearing you know what i promised that that i was going to do i cried for two hours straight two hours and then it was just like this lightness and 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 this thing to to, to really you know lift off of me and it was at that moment i was able to commit i i came back from india to convince my business partner to sell we sold you know we had three practices sold all three of them and that's when i made the commitment and and went on this journey i got rid of all of my hospital privileges burned all the boats said i'm not going back but it took that to be able to allow me to do that and then i had to open up my heart because when someone is suffering the main thing that they complain to me about is no one's listening. I'm telling the doctors what's going on. They're not listening. I tell my spouse what's going on. They're not listening. And they need someone to empathize and listen and hear them. And that, 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 was, that was very, um, it was a journey for me to get there. That's beautiful. And I know that your consults last an hour versus uh, the infamous, what is it, two and a half minutes or th something, I think, that in typical hospital systems you get to. I'm sure that, I mean, how could you do that and have an open heart, right? Like in, in, in what you're saying, I mean, I watched in my own family that scenario happen with my dad in the hospital and who felt it and who didn't and, you know, the and I get it from a medical perspective, like you can't watch people die all the time and feel it all the time. You need to numb yourself out a little bit, but at the same time, that's gross to think that we have to numb ourselves out. Like what, maybe maybe we need to rethink how we're doing all of it because if we can't be there emotionally for somebody in their time of need in their darkest hours in a hospital system, like COVID and all these people that died without having their family members with yes. them. I mean, how the hell did that happen? How did it happen that as people are dying that we thought the best thing was for their families to be protected from a virus rather than letting them be with their families? And mm -hmm. I forced that on the hospital when they put my mother in. I wasn't vaccinated. I made sure I got in that hospital and held her hand and hugged her and kissed her and got her out of the hospital in five days. And I said, and I know that it wasn't the, well, the medicines helped save her life and all that, which is great. They hydrated her. She was super dehydrated. But what got her out of the hospital was she knew she was loved. Mm -hmm. And she wouldn't have gotten out of that hospital had she not known it. Had she had to lay there under bad lights with bad food in a cold hospital. She had a cold gown on. I got her warm clothes. But that love is what heals. Yes. And, you know, when we start and you, and you were like, I don't really understand what you do, Kelly. You're not a doctor. I know that. I don't know. And I think eventually I finally was like, I hug people. I love them. I give them life force back because I find, and I'm sure you do too, that while you listen to them, what's really happening is a broken heart. Yes. Yes. It shows up symptoms, which you can run lab work on, right? I mean, let's get 
to mm -hmm. the medicine part of it. So how does that look for you now? Like, how do you interact with clients in a way that's different than it was, you know, obviously prior, but how yeah, do you interact with yeah. them now? Well, you know, I'm so grateful for my traditional training is because I can relate, you know, and what happens is a lot of times when someone goes to a, a person on, you know, the holistic side, they'll say, oh, you know, this is what you need. Don't take those poisons and, and oh, no, this is not the way. And, and so then they're like, OK, I'm going to do this. But then when they have a crisis and then they go to their doctor, then their doctor says, uh, you know what, your diet doesn't matter. These supplements are just expensive urine. That's not going to help you. You need to take your medicine. And now they're conflicted. And so there's there there has to be a way to, you know, take the best of both. OK. And I feel like that's what I've been blessed with is being able to have someone come in my office. They're on six, seven different medications. Um, I, it's, it's not it's not advisable to for them just to throw their medications out. And so I said, okay, well, this is what we can do. We're going to get your body where your body doesn't need most of these medications. And then we can wean them down appropriately where you're not feeling ill. You're not going in through any type of withdrawal and it's safe. And I know how to communicate with your doctor because I speak the same language and get your doctor on the same, uh, on the same page. Because as soon as you have one person telling you one thing and the other person telling you other, then you're conflicted. Then you're just, you know, that causes stress. And we all know what stress does to your health, you know? And so I, I feel that that is one of the gifts that I've been blessed with, with being trained in both sides. That's huge. I mean, I say that to clients all the time. They come in on five or six medications. And the first thing Ian and I say is we're not taking off medications. We don't put you on medications. You got to work with your doctor to do that. And we're going to get you feeling well enough that you feel over medicated. And then you got to go to your doctor and help them lean. But that becomes the tricky part. Yes. And and I know that the community right now is like, OK, well, it's Stacey in and blah, blah, blah. And we're going to talk about that. But there is that is such a tricky point for us at True Wellness and has been for many years. And we've had many medical doctors that we've worked with that have helped some of those bridges. But I know there's more need than we have to to fill that capacity because and, and I'm so thankful to you, Dr. King, to be offering that for this client base that goes, OK, listen, I love what I'm doing at True Wellness, but I want to get off these medications. My doctor doesn't understand what's going on. And I need somebody that understands the pharmacy part because I don't and I won't I won't work with it because it's it's way out of my scope. And it would be dangerous for us to do that, in all honesty. So, you know, we've worked together with other clients. He doesn't know much about the lymph. So he sent them over to me about the lymphatic system. And so we're working with a couple of his clients for there. And that's what the future of medicine is. It's about yes. collaboration and community and people knowing what each other's doing and finding their expertise and then sending them to those people with their expertise. And you all, you being in charge and having practitioners that listen to you, that hear you on every level, spiritually, emotionally, and physically, and can address all the levels to help you ascend into the higher level of frequency so that you don't need supplements and medications, your lifestyle is fixed, your emotions are fixed, and you know how to manage yourself regardless of what's going on. I don't like the word manage. I don't like that word. You can uh, feel your own flow state and then stay within the flow state. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I don't want, we don't, it's, I remember said guru saying, um, I don't understand why you, when I came to America, all these people were talking about managing stress. Why would you want to manage stress? And I was like, yeah, that's true. Why do we want to manage stress? We want to de-stress. We don't yes. want to manage it. We want to de-stress. That is for sure. So I just that's want to live sure. in the flow state so I don't feel stress. <laughs> right. That's the point, right? Because yeah. We've all, I mean, your beautiful wife had a stressful event a few weeks, a month, two months ago now, two months ago. She was a little MVA, but you know, her body's healing because she knows how to get into the flow state, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, motor vehicle accidents happen all the time. But how do we heal through that yes. while you're making all these changes, right? Because I know right. that you guys have a lot of changes going on, a lot of transition in the practice as you're developing all new systems, but she heals because she stays in the flow state. There you go. Yeah. And yeah. if she didn't, it would take her longer to heal because stress doesn't. Yeah. 
That's for sure. If she was managing her injury. <laughs> exactly. Rather than healing and eating good food and laughing right. and doing right. all the things that she loves to do. There you so, go. So as an internist, where in your practice now, you see clients, do you have a physical practice? Do you see people virtually only? Yes. Yeah, so I see people all over the country. We have a virtual practice. I do have a physical office. Um, we do, uh, people come from all over. We actually, I'm very big into brain health and brain optimization. And so we do QEEGs, we do brain mapping. We have some uh, magnetic stimulation to really try to change the, and optimize the brain. So that's what we kind of do physically, but all of our uh, lifestyle uh, uh, things that we do, we really focus on the foundation of health and all of those programs that we have, you know, they are all virtual. And so I can work with, with, with people anywhere that they are. I don't practice internal medicine. What I do is I utilize my internal medicine knowledge to help optimize people's health and to wean them off of medications appropriately and things of that nature, know about reactions with various supplements and supplements with medications and things of that nature. But what I practice is, you know, integrative medicine where I integrate all my knowledge to be able to help someone really optimize their health to ultimately get into that happy flow state as, as you speak of. <laughs> and, and, and you'll do lab work, right? Blood work. Yes. So can you kind of explain we, your yes. of like yes. how you deep dive deep into the analysis? A absolutely. So most doctors, so this is, this is the most uh, frustrating thing that a lot of people go through. They know that they don't feel right. They know they don't feel optimal. They go to their doctor. Their doctor does all these labs and says, everything is normal. Yeah. Well, is it all in my brain? I know I don't feel normal. I know I don't feel optimal. And so there's two reasons why that happens. Number one, they're not checking all the correct labs. And the reason is because if they participate with the insurance model, the insurance company dictates what they can check and, and everything like that. So if they say, if you, if you don't have a diagnosis code, which means if you don't have a disease to justify this lab, then we're not going to pay for it. That's the problem. And so what we do is we do kind of like a functional analysis of blood work, which is like three, four times the amount of, of labs, you know, because we don't, we're, we're not under the insurance umbrella. So we're able to do that. So that's number one. So we can really dig deeper into someone's biochemistry. The second thing is the, the, the lab ranges, what's considered normal, you know, because you just said, you know, the, the obesity rates, it's like, okay, that's the new normal. So what, guess what? The new normal is being sick. I don't want to be compared to sick people. And so what we do is we don't use the regular quote unquote normal lab values. We have optimal ranges. Where are you going to be if you're optimal? Every single lab that we analyze, we're looking at the optimal ranges and that's what we shoot for. Awesome. Awesome. Um, what's your favorite thing to do every day? My favorite thing to do every day is to, you know, fish, but I don't do it every day. <laughs> I love being out on the water. Like, yeah. it, you know, I just love it. Um, but I don't do it every day because I'm so busy. But yeah. that's if I was able to do something every day, I'd be on the water every day. I can see fishing, that. Fishing, boating. He's silent and strong. Like he hit his wife, Kashim, and I are like the same personality. Like, blah, blah. <laughs> and we were, um, how we really got to know each other is we were at a trip and we got, we were going up a gondola. And it was supposed to be 20 minutes and it was like an hour and a half or something crazy. Right. right. And it was just his wife, him, and I. And I was like, okay, well, we're stuck here. Let's get to know each other. It was awesome. <laughs> and and I really fell in love with both of them. I mean, I'd already loved their energy. That was the first weekend I'd ever met them. And I loved their energy. And it, we were in Utah in July. And it was cold. And they went to, like, Walmart or somewhere and came back with all these layers of clothes. And I was like, I love these two people. Where do they live? Naples, Florida. You guys, it's freezing here. <laughs> and I was like, yes. Um, but you know, in all his heart, that that weekend not only did they crawl into my heart, but I know that they crawled in so many people's hearts. And your spiritual, 
your way is, it reminds me so much of Ian, right? And, and I've mentioned this to you, even though you haven't met him yet, but it's just so like, you're so relaxed and you're so Zen and you're just so happy and you're just, you're, you're just being, you're in the flow state. Like if you want to know somebody that's in the flow state, you just met him. Dr. King is in the flow state. <laughs> and, and I just appreciate you so much and I appreciate your wisdom and, and I'm so grateful that my community now has access to you and can know that there's somebody out there that can help them understand all that lab work that I don't want to do and that can help them needle through some of that and that will actually listen to them. And your consult, like if somebody wants to have a consult with you is an hour. And I'm just going to say this now. He has offered our community. It's normally 387 for that hour. He's going to discount it for the next 30 days to $147. So if you want to have an hour consult with him, you can reach out to him at naplesvitality.com. We'll put that all in the show notes too, but go to naplesvitality.com, go to the chat box and type in the podcast name, The Beats, and then put your email address in there. And the first 10 people that do that, he's gonna give you a 15 minute free consult just to get to know him a little bit and see where he can maybe help you. Um, but if you wanna have an actual consult with him, he will discount it for the 30 days after this airs uh, for the people that put, put in The Beats and will, um, you, you can have access to them. So yeah. I want to talk. Make sure little, you put in the beats. Don't forget beats. that. Okay. Yeah, don't forget the beats so he knows where it's coming from. So, <laughs> and you're going to start a podcast soon. We've been begging him to start a podcast because he's so brilliant. Uh, but you do have, don't you have a following on YouTube or Instagram or something? Because you're always talking or Facebook, is it? It's something. Uh, you know, I'm just wherever people will listen to me, you know. <laughs> but yes, yeah, Facebook. Follow. I'm, I'm most active on Facebook. Uh, we have a, um, a private Facebook group that people can access called Stress, Hormones, and Inflammation. Oh. And so if you search that, you, you can just apply to, to, to be um, let into that. But yeah, that, that, that's probably one of the best places. I, I, I'm not as consistent like on YouTube and things of that nature. Um, Instagram, I'm okay. trying to do better. But Facebook, Facebook and Instagram are, are where I'm at the most. Uh, okay. Yes. Good, and good. Naples Vitality. If, if someone just looks up Naples Vitality or types in my name, Lionel King, it's not Lionel. It doesn't have an O in it like Lionel Richie. Um, but yeah, Lionel. Lionel King, they'll find me. And so why did you, I'm curious why you're gravitating towards the brain and then we'll wrap it up in the next few minutes, but I, I'm curious why you went to the brain. Cause I know that that's become your new thing yes. and we've had a lot of conversations. I can't wait to get down to Naples and play with you with flow Prezos and Weber lights and all sorts of things. But why, why did you go to the brain? I'm curious. Well, you know, it's the body follows the mind and, and because we really focus on lifestyle and, and I've always been fascinated why people do what they do, you know, or why people don't do what they should do. And you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't have the mindset to take action on it or apply it, then like, what good is it? You know, it's like, unless you're going to be on Jeopardy one day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and your life is determined that the, the quality, the fulfillment, the happiness that's here. Everything that we do from a financial standpoint, from a health standpoint, from a relation standpoint, is only for one reason. And that is because it, we, we believe that it's going to give us happiness and fulfillment. Well, there's a shortcut to that. And, and that is right here. We can have that right now. And so once we get to here, it's like shortcut. That's the ultimate hack, in my opinion, is right here. And so the function, if your brain is not functioning properly, then it's almost like working with a computer that has a short in it or a computer that uh, has an outdated um, operating system. We're not really going to be able to be as productive. So I feel like out of every other organ, that is the most uh, uh, impactful and the most powerful. Um, and so I want to make sure that people are, they have the mindset to really optimize their health because you know you can take away someone's legs, but they can still fly as long as they have the the, the mindset to do so. So that's that's the reason uh, why, and, and it's just so fascinating, you know, improving memory. We've had people that 
they're scared because they have a family history of Alzheimer's. They're starting to lose, you know, their, their, their memory and things of that nature. It doesn't matter how many beautiful experiences that you've had in life if you can't remember them. Yeah. And so now the things that we're seeing, people's memories are coming back. Um, people that are plagued with anxiety or depression, they're getting off of medications. They're no longer anxious. They're, they're, they're no longer uh, depressed. People that have had traumatic brain injuries. I've never, never knew that there was um, something that could help traumatic brain injury. I never knew this. And now we're finding where we can actually see the brain waves and show what it does to the electrical function of the brain and correct it, 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 it it's just amazing. It, it, regenerative medicine is understanding that the body regenerates. It's not regenerative yes. medicine. It's, it's understanding that the body actually regenerates and that it's Absolutely. all about frequency. It's all about light and frequency. And you're looking at it with brain waves. And that's why yes. I'm, you know, so excited for us to work together on that way to, to talk yes. about the light and the lymph because I'm all about the brain too and draining the brain, right? Getting the lymphatic system to work because what I've always said is there's more lymph than there is blood, but you got to make sure the brain is draining. The brain won't drain unless the gut drains. The gut won't drain unless the tonsils drain. The tonsils drain, then your brain can let go. And I'm sure with all that brain work, you're working on people's guts, correct? That's absolutely correct. You're, yeah. you're working the on their brain. Metabolism. It's almost... I mean, it's one, you know, they say, the, the, right. The gut's the second brain. It's the gut brain. Yes. The gut brain. Yes. So my last question that I always ask, is there anything else you want to share with the community? Anything about what you've done or anything? Go ahead. And yes, I absolutely. Question. I want to share this. And, and, and this is so dear and important to me. I am just so very grateful for people like you, Kelly, because you know, we were taught in, in medical school that if we can't prove it, if we can't see it, it, it doesn't exist and it doesn't belong in our scope of practice. That, that is mandated with all the, you know, if you can't prove it in research, it doesn't matter if it's common sense. If you can't if you show me a research study that shows it, and we've been indoctrinated in that. And you have been doing what you have been doing for so many years and your passion and your conviction is infectious. And, and, and it's, it's practitioners like yourself that allow me to say, you know what? I don't quite understand all that you do, but I'm <laughs> gonna send people to you because they need you, you know? And, and you've, you, you've helped me just being in your presence. You, you've helped my wife, Kashima. Um, and your heart is so big that it gives me hope and it, it motivates me and it gives me drive to keep moving forward. And that is what I would like to share. Oh, I'm very humbled and honored by those words, Dr. Lionel. Thank you so much. And you too give me hope and so many Dr. Jess. And, you know, I would say that four or five years ago, if I had started this podcast, you'd hear me definitely go, doctors, doctors, doctors. I feel very different now. I know that we are now working together in more collaboration than ever. And it's like-minded, open-hearted, open-minded medical doctors like yourselves are gonna help us really make this transition. And I'm grateful for that too. <laughs> So now my question. So you know my goal, you know my big hairy goal is to affect 23 billion people in the next three generations because I want this medicine to be the foundation of medicine, not to be the alternative at the last ditch effort that all the other allopathics have gone off. So let me see if I can take some homeopathics and do colonics and maybe get rid of my stage four cancer. That's gotta end. And we only have 7.6 billion or so people forget the light. It just doesn't want to stay up there today. We only have about 7.6 billion people in the world right now. So my goal is that in three generations, that 23 billion people are now doing this as the foundation of their lifestyle and they don't need medicines except in emergency situations. So that's three generations. And I know I'm not quite there yet, but let's say you had a microphone today and you got to every person on the planet got to hear Dr. Lionel King and what he wanted to share with the world. What is the secret that you want to share with the world? The, 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 the secret that I would like to share is that you have control. 
theory. You have control. We have had generations that have given up that control because they, we just don't believe that we have control and we've given it all away. Once we understand that we actually have control, that changes everything. Absolutely. Perfect. It is always an extreme pleasure to be in your presence. And I have just, you're like a brother to me at this point. I just love you so much. I wish I could physically hug you, but you know that I feel your hug from here. And thank I you. I thought for- you were like hugging me when you were messing with the light. And then I was like, well, found I out that it was just the light that you were. <laughs> both. It was both, Dr. Both, both, both. Love you both. So if you are, you know, if you feel this resonate with you, if you are looking for a doctor that can really listen to you and hear you and see your heart and feel your heart, or you know somebody in your community that needs this, please share this with them. We know how incredibly unique and brilliant and what a unicorn Dr. King is. Um, so I, I'm so thankful for him and, and so many other doctors that are on their way to learn this medicine or are out there that we just haven't found yet because they haven't marketed themselves. And what we're looking to do is bring them all together and collaborate. So truly from our heart to all of yours, thank you from True Wellness and from The Beats. And if you like us and all the things that my son says to do, hit your notification button. Oh, rate us. That's what I keep forgetting to say. Please rate us. It helps us if you give us a rating on the podcast and the YouTubes to put this out there more. So if you have the wherewithal to do that, please do that. Thank you all. And I appreciate and love you all truly from my heart to yours. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much for listening today to this episode of The Beats. And as your host, Kelly Kennedy, truly from my heart to yours, thank you for your time and your attention today. And if this did resonate with you, please do leave some comments. We would love to hear from you. And if this further you think would resonate with somebody that you know, please do go ahead and share that and hit that notification button so you know when The Beats is available to you. We do do some live things every once in a while. And watch out for some of our upcoming events. We have a node release class coming up in the local area here in Pennsylvania. Uh, Ian has a walk coming up. So you can check out some information on our website, the True Wellness Center, about all the details about those upcoming events. Um, And as always, we pray that this information today was not only foundational, but raised some questions for you and helped you be empowered to take actionable, profound steps toward regeneration because your body is the only thing that heals. And that is our message here on The Beats. Thanks again for listening and for sharing. Have a great day.